Hi guys, welcome back to another video. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make Google Maps the default map application in iOS 13. Right off the bat, if you're new to the channel, please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you get notified when I drop a new video each week. If you take here a look at my lock screen, you'll notice this really cool water effect. This is a tweak called Aquaboard XS. And if you check out my last video, I go into detail about all of my favorite tweaks I've got installed for iOS 13 and Aquaboard XS is included there. So let's jump into this tutorial. So as a default on iOS, your map application is going to be Apple Maps. And while Apple Maps is an excellent mapping application, there are scenarios in which I think Google Maps would be a better choice. So I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why Google Maps might be the best choice for you. Well, let's say you're in a brand new city and you don't have cellular or Wi-Fi access out in that city, but you do have a nice Wi-Fi connection at your hotel. What you might want to do before heading out is to download a map of the city. So let's say, for instance, we're here in Los Angeles. So if I was about to go out and do a walkabout, I would hit Los Angeles. And once you pull up Los Angeles, you could swipe up here in the center and you'll see a three dotted uh, toggle button here. Toggle that and you'll have an option to download offline map. So click on that. And once you're there, it'll give you a rectangular perimeter. And within that, you'll see a view of the city. And you can kind of slide it around. And you select the area that you think you're going to be navigating in to download. So let's just put it here, kind of get a nice selection of Los Angeles. And then click Download. And it's going to download that area. The area in the rectangle is the area that's going to be downloaded. So I'm going to come back when this is finished downloading. All right, we're back and the map has finished downloading. Uh, one thing you'll note from this screen, you'll see the size of the downloaded map, 170 megabytes, which isn't much um, for today's storage capacities. So you're not gonna be seeing a big hit on your storage when you're using these downloaded maps. Another thing is there's a button here to delete. So you can delete the map and maybe re-download, select a new area if you wish, or you can update the app. And it's really important to pay attention to that update because what happens with Google Maps, at least in my experience, is if you let a bit of time go by without updating, when you're traveling, you'll see your map will start calling for cellular data. It'll say, oh, we don't have a cellular data connection. And that means your map needs to be updated. Uh, the downloaded map needs to be updated. So I'd say if you're in a city and you're about to travel out using an offline map, make sure it's updated just prior to leaving so you have a fresh update and you won't run into any issues with your map becoming unresponsive or requesting that cellular data connection. So our map is updated, we just downloaded it. Now let's do a test. So I'm gonna put the phone in airplane mode so we don't have any kind of connection. Let's do a sample search. Uh, let's go to Target, that's a local shop here. And we're gonna request directions. So tapping on directions. And you'll see right away, I've got turn-by-turn -turn navigation, full directions, and we don't have cellular or Wi-Fi turned on. So you can see the effectiveness of having an offline option. And the standard Apple Maps does not offer, at least at this time, an offline option to download maps. So as I said, this is just a really handy way, if you're traveling and your city's covered by Google, chances are you'll be able to utilize this offline maps option. So let me get into the juicy part of the tutorial and show you how to get this functionality installed on your phone. You're going to need a couple of things to get Google Maps set as the default. The first and most important thing you can do once you've jailbroken your phone is to install a file browser. In this case, I've got Filza installed. It's one of the most easy and effective file browsers. And you can find that in your Cydia or Zebra Package Manager, depending on what you use. Just search for Filza. And it's the Filza File Manager. And then go ahead and download that. They've got a free version as well as a paid version that unlocks and gets rid of these advertisements. Um, so you've got Filza installed. That's the first thing you need. The second thing that you need is something called AppSync Unified. 
And you can see I've got it already installed here. You can find that on Karen's repo. I'll leave a link in the description for the repo where you can find all of these tweaks as well as a link to the dev that we're going to be installing. So AppSync Unified allows you to install unsigned apps, independent apps that you might not find on package stores like Cydia, Cilio, or Zebra. And so for this tutorial, we're actually going to be downloading a deb from a third party uh, source over on GitHub and AppSync is going to allow us to install that uh, in collaboration in concert with Filza. So let's head over to our desktop and see how we can download this deb and get Google Maps installed on our device. All right, so we're here at GitHub and this is a GitHub repository by Lorenzo Payne. He's the one who developed this tweak and it's called Google Maps Default. And you'll see here, he's got a folder with stable builds. We'll click here inside that folder. Here's our deb right here at the top, Google Maps Default 0.0.1. .0 and we're gonna download this. You go ahead and click. And then there's a button here to download and this should initiate a download of the deb. So you see right here, you could save it to your desktop or wherever you'd like to save it on your computer. So once you've got the deb downloaded, you can navigate to where you've got that saved and then open up your FTP file browser. And what FTP is going to allow us to do is transfer that app over to your phone using SSH. That's another thing I forgot to mention is make sure that you've got open SSH installed on your device. I know with some of the jailbreaks, sometimes that's not installed, maybe with check rain or uncover, I can't remember, but always check to make sure open SSH is installed. And you can find that in Cydia or Cilio or Zebra, depending on what you have installed. And see, I've already got it installed, but if you didn't, you just go here, click install, and then you've got open SSH and that allows for wireless transfer of files to and from your device, which comes in really handy. So I've got open SSH installed and then I'm going to go ahead and click on a new connection. And the type of connection that we do for an SSH transfer is called SFTP secure file transfer protocol. And another necessary thing for SFTP and SSH is to know the Wi-Fi IP address of your phone. And that's easy to find. You just dive here in settings, click on Wi-Fi. If you're connected to your Wi-Fi router, click on Wi-Fi, click the little information button here. And then just down here, you'll see your IP address. So make a note of that address. And then once we head back over to FTP, we're going to type in that address here. And then your username by default is root. That never changes. And then the password, the default password for iOS and SSH is Alpine. But you want to go ahead and change that because most people know that's the default password. So you'll leave yourself open to getting hacked if you leave that password as a default. So make sure once you get open SSH set up to go ahead and change that password as quick as you can. So I've already changed my password. We've got my IP address there. We're going to initiate a connection. So here we are inside and then navigate to a folder of your choice where you would like to transfer the file and just make a note of that destination. So later when we go to access the phone, you can go ahead and access that right in the folder where you transferred it. So here we are within the downloads folder on my phone and I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop the deb right over. So we've got the Debs successfully transferred. It's a really small download, so it should just take a couple of seconds to transfer that over. So once that's done, we can go ahead and close out our FTP and let's head back over to our device. So now that we're here back on my device, I'm going to go ahead and dive into Filza, navigate over to the folder where you transferred the Deb file. In this case, I put it in my downloads folder. So I've got it right here and then we'll just simply click on the Deb hit install, and then you'll know it's a successful install. 
Here at the bottom, you'll get a bash uh, 5.0 message. That means it's successfully installed. And then you just hit respring and you should be good to go. All right, so our device is resprung. We're gonna head in and now Google Maps should be our default. So let's do a test, jump into contacts. Uh, let's head over to the passport agency and click on the map. And there you have it. So we've got Google Maps right here set as the default and this should work for all links across your device. So whenever you click on a map link, it should open up the Google Maps as the default mapping app. So that covers how to get Google Maps installed. Uh, once again, make sure you've got Filza, which is going to allow you to install third-party Debs and also AppSync Unified, which works in conjunction with Filza to successfully install those Debs. A couple of pro tips about having Google Maps set as the default. Don't delete the Stock Maps app. Just go ahead and move it to a secondary page or hide it if you've got something like Springtomize installed, which allows you to hide default apps. But don't delete it because the Google Maps tweak mechanism, it actually uses Apple Maps to pass that link along in the back end. So if you were to delete the Stock Maps app, it wouldn't work. I've actually tried it out myself. The first time I did this, I deleted the Stock app and I was wondering why the links weren't opening at all. So you've got to leave that stock app installed. And on this stock app, if you'd like to switch back to using Apple Maps as default, make sure that you delete the Google Maps default tweak that we installed. And the way you delete that is to head back over to your package manager. And even though we didn't use this to install the tweak, the tweak is still available here as if we did install it. You'll see it here at the top. It's the most recent thing that I installed. And it's really simple to uninstall. You just uninstall it the same way you would uninstall any tweak. Click on it, click remove, and then confirm. And there you go. So now we should have Apple Maps back set as the default app. And the way you can verify that is just to do a quick test, dive back into contacts, head over to the passport agency again, and there you have it. We're back to Apple Maps as the default map on iOS. Thanks so much for tuning into this tutorial. That was a quick and easy way to set Google Maps as your default map application on iOS. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and if you guys need any additional details, Feel free to leave a comment down in the comments section. I'll be monitoring those and try to answer them as quick as I can and get you the information you need. Be sure to tune in to my brand new video next week. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Peace.